So now that I've had a chance to play around with this concept of extrusion and I feel fairly comfortable with it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into my snowman project. I'll choose the window pull down menu and that allows me just to jump back to um, any project that is open. And uh, before I push too far forward, I'm going to do a quick save and I'll do a file save incremental. So now I'm working on the next version of my file. So to get this started, what I'll do is I'll generate a cube. Okay, and I'm going to make this cube much smaller, but I'm also going to put it in its general, uh, the general position that I want it to be. So I'm going to use these little control points that show up in Cinema 4D. I'll move it over along the X so I can get a better look at it. And uh, I'm just really kind of eyeballing the proportion of this thing. I'll rough it out and I'll take a look at the numbers here in just a moment. So um, it feels still a little big. But now I can jump over the numbers and I see that I'm working at, um, well, maybe I'll bump this down to say six centimeters. I'm going to round these numbers off. And that looks pretty good. That's kind of what I'm going for. I, I want a size about like this relative to the snowman. Maybe that's a little long. Again, this is really up to you and it's just we're going to feel our way through this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to bump up the segmentation a bit. Now, the segmentation... Um, for this model, and let me tap the S key to zoom in, and I'll also change my display to a view that includes lines. Um, I'm going to bump up my segmentation just a little bit, um, just in case I decide to make some changes to this model later on. But I'm only going to change the segmentation according to the Y axis. I'll click, click, probably two times, and you can see that that just generates two um, additional vertical segments. So I have one, two, and three. I'm, I'm keeping the X and the Z segmentation just as it is, uh, and then I'll click on the icon to make that object editable. I'm going to go back to the Move tool, or excuse me, the 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 direct the Live Selection tool, and I'll just click and drag back to catch the top polygon. Now, I'm trying to catch the top polygon, and I, and I don't see it happening, um, so I think I inadvertently selected off of the cube. Okay, so I'll drag, drag back. I'm trying to make a selection and I can't quite get in there. And um, I think Cinema 4D is acting a little funny here because I see that it's a polygon object. Ah, I forgot to select the polygon component. So I was still in the model mode. So Cinema 4D was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, I thought I had already selected the polygon component. So now when I roll over, I'm catching the top of my, uh, of, of my stick object. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use that same trick that I used last time. Um, whether I'm in the modeling view or whether I press the D key, uh, I now have the ability to do a quick extrusion. So I'm dragging off to the right. And I'm keeping my extrusions fairly shallow. And not only can I do an extrusion, but I can extrude and then I can go over to the scale tool and off in, in the negative space again, I can click or drag left and right and I can start to scale this and cause it to taper a little bit, which uh, there might be some value in that. I'll press the D key again and I'll scale this. I'll roll my mouse over to the scale tool. I'll make a note that the T key is the shortcut. So I'll, I'll play back and forth between T and I'll just do scale it down just a little bit. I'll press the D key and I'll continue to extend that. Um, so you can see that I'm, I'm getting this you know, fairly nice taper. I'll do another extrusion. And now what I'll do is I'll jump in, I'll tap the S key, and I'm going to back my mouse off just a little bit, and I'll pan around so that I can change my view. So I'm not dragging, it kind of looks like I'm dragging uh, the model around. I'm not. I'm holding down the one key. I'll back off just a little bit. And what I'll do, I think, is I'll continue to extrude this a little bit. I'll tap the T key to scale, and I'll scale that down. I'll extrude one more time, and this time I'll tap the T key and I'll scale it way down, and I'll go back to the Move tool, and I'll just start to move that over just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of character. And in fact, I'll start moving uh, this model around just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to jump back down here, and I'm going to choose one of these real kind of um, smaller polygons, and I'll select that polygon, and I'll extrude from here as well. So I'll just extrude out just a little bit. Again, I'll go back to scale. I'll scale this down. I'll extrude it some more. And this time what I'll do is I'll go to the rotation tool. Let me change my view just a little bit here. Get a better look at this. 
and I'll just rotate it. I'll extrude, and now you see that that's starting to change direction a bit, and I'll scale it, I'll extrude it, I'll rotate it, and again, I'll just kind of play with this. I'll, I'll exaggerate this a little bit for the sake of the demo, just to just to make some quick forward progress here. But that. I think is going to do the trick. Now, I don't like how this, you know, I, I'm not crazy about this shape right now. I actually want this to take a more dramatic uh, turn upward. And, and what I could do, there's a number of things that I could do. Um, I could select all these polygons or all these edges and just move the whole model up. And in order to do this, uh, I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm going to use um, uh, the, the loop selection. We looked at this briefly. If I go to select, there's the loop selection here, and I'm still in the polygon mode, and what I can do is I'm holding down shift click, and it's allowing me very quickly to select all these polygons. Now, I, I think I did not get that top polygon, so I'm gonna go back into the live select tool. I'll hold down shift, which adds to the selection, and having all that stuff selected. Again, I could have manually selected all of that, but I felt like uh, the loop selection was the best way to go. I could move this whole thing up, in fact, I could even rotate this whole thing and just, you know, really kind of changing the, uh, the way that this overall position is. There we go. Maybe I'll rotate this a little bit more. So I'm just, you know, kind of really kind of tweaking uh, the model by selecting certain parts of it. Now it looks pretty good. I'll just fine tune this. Um, I'm going to go into the edge mode and I'll use that same technique of loop selection. Again, I could, I could do this. Um, just by manually selecting, you know, polygons or points or whatever, you know, whatever makes sense. But um, at this point, I could use points or edges. What I'm trying to do is just kind of select, again, another loop selection. So I'll go to select. I'm going to look for loop selection. And what I'm trying to grab is just a loop around the object. And what that'll do is allow me to make a selection. I'll go to move, and I'm just adding, you know, a few position changes just to add you know, the, this, this irregular kind of form to, you know, what would be a stick or a branch that we pick up off the ground. I'll do a quick loop selection. And I, I, I got a loop selection very quickly simply by tapping the U key. And then from the U menu, I can look under L and I see that there's a loop selection. So it's U, L really quickly if you want to try that quick key. And uh, I'm going to mix things up a little bit. I'm going to go to the to the scale tool, and you can see, well, wait a second, I just have a couple of edges scaled. Well, if I scale those edges up, you can see that it makes it a little bit bigger and causes it to taper. So again, U, L to make a loop selection. I'll select that bottom loop, and I'll do the same thing. I'll go to T, which will allow me to scale. U, L, I'll grab that bottom. And in this case, you know, I'm trying to get that bottom loop, and, and the reality is, is what I could do is just look at the bottom of this model, I'll go back into polygon mode, and I won't even bother with the loop selection. I'll go to live select, and I'll just grab that bottom polygon. I'll achieve the same thing if I scale that. I'll scale it up. Okay, and so now I, I have this uh, sort of stick shape. Now, I could have spent more time and, uh, you know, really modeled this in, in, in a fairly different way, but I think that this is going to be, I think it's going to give me what I want. Maybe I'll even want to add another branch coming off of here. So I'll just do, uh, I'll go back to live select, I'll do it quick selection right there, tap the D key and just do a real quick extrusion. Same technique that I did before and I'm just using these quick keys. I mean, I, I don't have to use these quick keys, but I think it's really going to save me a lot of time. I'll change my view a little bit so I can see this just a little better. just to give it some other kind of a, a point of interest there. So that looks pretty good for now. I could always go back in and, uh, and continue to change this, but for now, I think I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Uh, in the next presentation, I want to take a real quick look at hypernerves objects and other kinds of nerves that we can use um, to add more organic qualities to uh, the different models that we create, but we'll do that in the next presentation.